Football World Cup <laughs> with Opal Gillette Pasbana and Samsung Electronics. With just 12 days to go until the start of France 98, the World Cup warm-up games are getting warmer. And with D-Day for the national team coaches to name their final 22s looming after the weekend, the heat is increasing on those players stuck in the maybe, maybe not bracket. Tonight it's Belgrade on Eurosport and two nations with a reputation for attacking flair, showing how close they are to completing preparations as Yugoslavia take on Nigeria the national anthems immaculately observed by a packed crowd hoping to see Yugoslavia continue to show the progress they made in storming to World Cup qualification they finished second in their European qualifying group behind Spain before absolutely destroying Hungary in a two-leg playoff 12-1 on aggregate and coach Slobodan Santrac has named just about the strongest possible side that he could have put out for this friendly match with the Nigerians. The big guns are all there. Miatovic, the European Cup winner for Real Madrid. Stojkovic, Mihailovic, Milosevic, Jugovic. They're all in there to face a Nigerian team that has had its problems. Their Yugoslav coach, ironically, Bora Milutinovic, under fire by the Nigerian media particularly in the wake of a 4-0 defeat to Swiss champions Grasshopper Zurich in a recent World Cup warm-up game. Finidi George, the star of the 11 on show in Belgrade this evening. Victor Ikpeba of Monaco as well involved, as well as Sunday Elise of Ajax, Taribo West of Inter Milan, Miljutinovic. With a very rich squad to choose from. Nigeria, many people's outside bet to do very well indeed in the World Cup finals. Yugoslavia too, very much dark horses these two nations, they know how to entertain, they know how to score goals, will they know how to reach the second phase or better? It's a tremendous atmosphere. The Yugoslavs passionately behind their team as they get ready for their first World Cup finals in eight years. For political reasons, the country wasn't allowed entry to USA 94. But Italia 90 they did very well indeed to reach the quarterfinals before a penalty shootout exit to the Germans. As for Nigeria, well, USA 94 was their crowning glory in many ways. And it's the Africans who get us underway in their chain strip of all white. The Yugoslavs in dark blue shirts and white shorts. A distinctly darker shade of blue than we've been used to seeing them wearing in their World Cup qualifying campaign. 
And immediately, Adepoju is put under pressure. And Yugoslavia try and mount an attack with a familiar name, Savo Milosevic. Now Brnovic loses out. So both sides guilty of giving away possession all too easily in these early stages. First free kick of the game is awarded in favour of Viktor Paper. And just holds his left groin as he walks away. Bora Milutinovic getting ready to make World Cup history. His fourth successive finals as a coach. Four different teams. He has taken through the tournament. Mexico in 1986. Costa Rica in 1990, as all Scots will remember. And then in 94, the United States. In 98, it's Nigeria. Not been in charge too long either. Frenchman Philippe Troussier, it was, who guided Taribo West and company through their qualifying campaign. Troussier, a victim of internal politics. And a first touch for Barua. The distinctive figure of Taribo West. Another free kick. This time Oruna goes to ground. Olise. Ogpara. Turn of Operaku isn't matched by the quality of the ball forward. Ivica Kreil, the Yugoslav goalkeeper, can bring the ball out. Kreil, the only player actually based in his homeland, present in this starting lineup. Partizan Belgrade is his club. Yugoslav players dotted all around Europe, the lion's share in Spain and Italy. The Premiership, Bundesliga and the Portuguese, French and Japanese leagues have their representatives also. Lawal brings in Taribo West who's obviously getting into the spirit of the World Cup. Gone are the blue, black and gold ribbons that he sports in his hair while playing for Inter. This time it's the green and white of his country. And West with a Super Bowl! First chance, Nigeria. And Victor Igpeba will feel he should have done better with that. Great ball from West over the top. And the pressure from Murkovic, enough to put Igpeba off his stride. It's already seeing examples of Nigeria's attacking prowess they're adventurous to say the least there'll be goals where these two sides are involved in France Kreil ignores it paper and there's West again first foul in favor of Yugoslavia Predrag Miatovic walks away a man who's hit the headlines for all the right reasons in recent weeks. Of course, that magnificent European Champions Cup final winner for Real Madrid against Juventus. Here now, Murkovic. First corner goes to the home nation. will come the Sampdoria schema Sinisa Mihailovic got such a cultured left foot on him he'll be in charge of all the set pieces in France that one not one of his better ones although Abiodo Barua in the Nigerian goal didn't make it look quite as easy as he might have done Nigeria have had problems with goalkeepers Barua getting his chance to stake his claim. He was only a squad member at the Atlanta Olympics, which Nigeria clinched gold in. And there's a belated flag and whistle there as it paper streaked away. He's claiming with some 
accuracy that he didn't hear it and he's going to receive a yellow card for his trouble that seems a little bit harsh on Victor Paber and looking at the replay he was a good yard and a half on side referees are going to be under the spotlight more than ever in 12 days time And the new interpretations on the tackle from behind and what have you will mean there'll be quite a few of those cards dished out against players in the World Cup Finals. That was Mihailovic's rather ambitious left foot effort and again a few problems for Kryl. And the whistle just uh, halting the rhythm of play in this first six and a half minutes. Okachukwu Sporting the captain's armband. Oparaku. Okachukwu will again take charge of the free kick. Taripa West directing opposition. Just alongside him. Stojkovic, veteran now of the Yugoslav national side, but uh, still very much an important part of Slobodan Sansrach's plans. He was the only player to feature in all 12 qualifying games that Yugoslavia played. Oporaku, again looking for Paper or Adepoju to get clear. Stojkovic. Now Jugovic. Milosevic trying to uh, free himself of the attentions of the Nigerian defenders. However, Milosevic being very tightly policed in the centre in these early stages. Might get a chance if he can put the pressure on the goalkeeper, but Barua claims the ball and Milutinovic makes note of that. Nigeria really have had their goalkeeping problems. The latest player to stake his claim for a place in the side was Kuro Alexandra. Goalkeeper Adimola Bancola, but after a 4-0 defeat to Grasshoppers of Zurich, he was immediately relieved of his duties with the national squad and indeed Switzerland as a country has played quite a major part in those goalkeeping problems for Nigeria the accepted first choice I.K. Shorunmu Broke a hand playing for FC Zurich recently, that's why he's out of contention. Great chance for Barua, who also plays in Switzerland, ironically, with FC Sion. Mirkovic. Miatovic, great change of pace. Mirkovic again. Applause from the crowd at this little forward movement from Yugoslavia. Mijatovic working hard, but Yugoslavia get the ball out of the cul-de-sac well. And back they'll come again. And this time the flag up. Padrag Mijatovic, who uh, was many people's idea of European Footballer of the Year. What a season he's had, and if he could fire some goals to get Yugoslavia through to the last eight that's their uh, most realistic hope you would think in France then the season will just about have been complete they actually feel though the Yugoslavs that they can do somewhat better than that I mean you look at the quality available to Santrec you wouldn't bet against it just a question mark about their pace at the back at times
Jugovic finds some space. Petrovic. Corner forced. Zielko Petrovic, 32 years old, along with Dragon Stojkovic, both playing in the J-League in Japan. Petrovic at 32, a latecomer to the international scene, only just into double figures as far as caps are concerned. Better looking corner this time. Milosevic climbed well. He'll be looking for a confidence booster after a troubled season. Now Miatovic, great challenge. A few rather half-hearted calls for a penalty from the Belgrade crowd, but that really was a super tackle from Garba Lawal. It had to be time to perfection because Predrag Miatovic is not the sort of player who would neglect the opportunity to make a meal of those sort of challenges but not even he appealed for anything more than the corner and Barua called into question once more Stojkovic misses out Mihailovic played back into trouble but a good recovery as well from Okpara the game just starting to Open up, Yugoslavia having the better of things at the moment. Finidi George has seen very little of the ball. Little chance to show what he's best at, running at defenders. The Real Betis man. Now brings in Olise. And Oparaku. Stojkovic met by Finidi. Here's Vladimir Jugovic. Finding Jukanovic. And again, Miatovic has done well to just find some space. So adept at. Just moving away from the edge of the penalty area, coming back into the hole. Left for him by the Nigerian defence, and even with his back to goal, in such a dangerous proposition that Nigeria will have to get close to the Real Madrid man. Packed house in Belgrade for this game, although rather subdued the atmosphere at times there's the offside count three times Yugoslavia falling foul with the assistant's flag Okachukwu can't bring in Finidi Mirkovic's throw Burnovic and that's a rather clumsy challenge from Nubu Adepoju. Here's Milkovic again. Chance for a better delivery. Looks a good cross. And Savo Milosevic climbed high and should really at least have tested the goalkeeper. Murkovic did so well, he's one of the best of, around at getting down that right-hand side from full-back and putting useful crosses in, all that from a player and for his club Atalanta, stars more often than that in the centre of defence. Very much a right-back for Yugoslavia though, that's his best cross yet, Milosevic hasn't shown us his best with head or foot. Stojkovic now. 
Pressing hard is Branko Brnovic. Again, some accomplished defending from Uche Okachukwu, who's a commanding figure, the Nigerian skipper. He's an interesting character as well. He's actually got Turkish citizenship now. Plays for Fenerbahce in Turkey and uh, took the move out of loyalty to his club to enable them to bring in more foreign players and escape the limits imposed by Turkish football authorities. Very much a Nigerian at international level. And just about approaching his half century of caps now. Here's Savelic. Nice touch to give Miatovic a run. It's good vision, but Stojkovic. Couldn't take it in his stride. And a clumsy collision with Mobio Baraku. And the Nigerian defender seems to be making the most of that. Yugoslavia nil, Nigeria nil, coming up to 17 minutes played. We're expecting goals in this warm up game. Not quite sure who that message is directed at, but Predrak Miatovic and colleagues will certainly be uh, doing their best to score goals that the hearts of Yugoslavia want to see back home. An amazing rise for this Yugoslav national team. Almost out of nothing. They lost, of course, after the breakup of the former Yugoslavia, all their Croatian and Bosnian stars. What a team they'd have. If they were still able to include the likes of Alan Boksic and Deval Stukar in their ranks. Here's West. Mirkovic. Seen plenty of the ball, the fullback. That's a good ball as well. Milosevic. Again, excellently timed tackle from Garbalawal. Yugoslavia certainly have had the lion's share of possession and territorial advantage. Not able to convert any chances that have fallen their way though. Although with uh, Abiodun Barua, this man here, looking a little bit shaky at times. The likes of Mihailovic will fancy their chances from long range. And Barua again showing indecision. Defender came short and he didn't react quick enough to get the ball out to him. It's left to make paper to give chase. Okachuku at the back. Now here's Stojkovic for Yugoslavia. Stojkovic. That's great play. Petrovic. Policed by Finidi, goes the other way, excellent work again, and Barua's indecision should have cost him once more. Well, the goalkeeper comes and goes and changes his mind. It was great play from Dagan Stojkovic and Milosevic once again. Well, two great chances to score with his head. Yugoslavia are well in command of this game. Olise. You can hear the difference in atmosphere. There's an interesting statistic. Only an 8% gap in possession. Yugoslavia though, when they've had the ball at their feet, have done rather better with it. As Vladimir Jugovic earns a free kick, the Lazio star. He's going to be joined in Rome next season by one of the substitutes for Yugoslavia, 
this evening. There's another useful ball from Stojkovic looking for Petrovic, who goes down at a challenge for Operaku. No question of a foul. It'll be Operaku on the ball first and fairly. Yes, an interesting character on the bench for Yugoslavia, Dejan Stankovic, who could well be a star of European football for quite a few years to come. Just 19, heading from Red Star to Lazio after the World Cup finals. Scored two goals on his debut for his country. That was in their last game, a 3-1 win over South Korea. Another warm-up game is for the Yugoslavs. They've drawn 0-0 in Colombia they lost 3-1 in Argentina but that was very much a second string side after this they face Japan for their World Cup send-off before going to Switzerland on June the 6th again Milosevic is the guilty party that's uh, not out of three for the former Aston Villa striker on his way to Zaragoza in Spain and Dejan Stankovic, if Milosevic keeps up like this, may get his chance in this game sooner than he expected. Nice touch, couldn't quite put Finidi away. Nigeria trying to spray the ball around, but their passing hasn't been finding targets. Adepoju. Now Lawal. And a Pojo, good determination. Now Lawal still going. Oh, super chance. Best chance Nigeria have had. And while it wasn't exactly a flowing move, it was pure and simple determination between Adipoju and Garba Lawal. And the player who plies his trade in Holland with. Roda didn't really connect with his shot properly as Miatovic tries to get away from Okachukwu and reacts in what many would term typical Miatovic style and that will bring about punishment it will certainly be a yellow card that was the latest challenge we've seen so far doesn't look like any action's going to be taken apart from a free kick awarded to Nigeria to see them getting on with the game. Here's Okpara. And Ruma goes down. Asks for the card to be brandished. Once again, it isn't. So far, only Victor Ekpeba has seen yellow. And that for disputing an offside call that uh, was clearly wrong. No trouble at all. The Yugoslav defence quite happy to see that one. Glance wide. Tybo West again moving forward. He's had a good first season in Italy with Inter Milan. Kral finds Mirkovic. Vikanovic's throw. Good running from Stojkovic. He's been the star of the show in the midfield as Miatovic is shrugged away by West. And two of the old stages in the Yugoslav side, Stojkovic and Miatovic compare views. Both these sides are expected to reach the second phase in France. Good cross, and again problems for the goalkeeper. Mihailovic whipping it into the centre. That's just where Yugoslavia want to put it, because Abiodun Barua, well surely so far he's not done himself many favours in terms of establishing himself as the World Cup number one. He'll have to make a better fist of this one. And fist might be... An appropriate choice of words, he's tried to catch a several and didn't even go for that one. Now Oruma. He 
and Sonoruma crowded out. Mirkovic again with a throw. Miatovic. He settled for the corner. He'll get the free kick instead. Had a Poggi's challenge. Fredrag Miatovic, you would feel, could well be guilty in a week or so's time of getting just a few players into trouble with referees. And an early change to be made by Yugoslavia. And it looks as though Zoran Mirkovic, who's looked good down the right hand side, will have to go off early. Slobodan Komlenovic of Duisburg in Germany comes on. Mihailovic's free kick. And this time Miatovic getting the right side of the goalkeeper. Four glorious chances Yugoslavia have had now. One to that man there, Predrag Miatovic. Three to Milosevic. And basically all down to some uh, rather erratic positional play from Barua in goal. And Zoran Mirkovic explains just why he can't take any further part in this game. Coaches at this stage will be strictly enforcing a safety first policy. No point taking chances. And you have to name your squad in less than a week's time and get your players ready for the opening game when it really matters. Yugoslavia start in St Etienne on the 14th of June against the Iranians. Nigeria start a day earlier in Nantes against Spain. Here's Stojkovic. Dragon Stojkovic has started well. Petrovic. Better play. It's a lovely little touch to find Finidi. First touch, rather let La Wild there, but gets the free kick. Komlenovic's first involvement. Needs to give Nigeria a set piece in a dangerous position. Talibo West again makes his way forward. be delivered by Oruma free kick delivery not what it should have been Stojkovic another glorious ball outside of the right boot this time Milosevic battling but uh, the whistles will tell you what the Belgrade crowd have made of the former Partizan strikers display so far Stankovic chomping at the bit to get on Still no goals between these uh, nations tipped to be among the highest scorers at the World Cup. Yugoslavia in fact scored an incredible 41 goals in their 12 qualifying games. Admittedly 12 of those came in the last two against Hungary. And in Predrag Mijatovic they had Europe's top scorer with 14, seven of those against the unfortunate Hungarians. Not exactly the sort of tune you'd hear at your average premiership match. Good little ball forward. Miatovic for once is let down by his touch, recovers well. And again it's a wasted opportunity for Yugoslavia. Forward they'll come again with Yukanovic. Now Stojkovic, surely he can create something. Savelic beaten to it.
Now here's Lawal. Adepoju. A very clumsy challenge indeed from Slavisa Jakanovic. Free kick conceded by the Tenerife player. And Nigeria press and Jakanovic almost caught out again. High feet given. And the game goes on. And the pace threatening to pick up again in the final third of this first half. Milosevic. Miatovic missed out. And everybody missed out. It was too strong for Branko Brnovic. And Sever Milosevic is having an unhappy time of it so far this evening in Belgrade. Perfect chance for him to stake a claim. Replace partnering Predrag Miatovic. Stankovic and Drobniak wait on the bench and Anto Drobniak of French Champions Racing Lons has an outstanding record in international level. And Milosevic will have to shape up rather better than this in the remainder of the game, if he's given the opportunity that is. The crowd seem to want him denied of that already. Two-footed challenge from Petrovic. Shows just what a still evening it is. And why goalkeeper Abiodun Barua of Nigeria has had no excuses in, well, really making a complete hash of his attempts to deal with the crosses that, particularly Murkovic, before he went off midway through this first half, was putting in from out wide. There have been chances, four or five now for Yugoslavia, just a couple to Nigeria. And noticeably, in just about every chance, those that were presented with opportunities were guilty of missing the target, rather than forcing the goalkeepers into saves. Savalic caught out. Okpara. Support from Sunday Elise. And now from Adepoju. Stojkovic again, this time with his right foot. Such a cultured player. Almost seems wasted playing in Japan with Gary Lineker's old club, Nagoya Grampus 8. But uh, the Yugoslav skipper has almost got even better since he moved to Japan. Didn't do himself justice in spells with Marseille in France and Verona in Italy. More relaxed in Japan. Able just to pick up his money and play as he wants. And he's such a good playmaker. He's still a regular for Yugoslavia at 33. And with over 60 caps behind him. Yugoslavia in Group F facing Iran, Germany and the USA and uh, the Germans won't mind that they've beaten the Yugoslavs in four out of five World Cup finals meetings and more often than not when they've beaten Yugoslavia in fact each time the Germans have won the competition they've beaten Yugoslavia somewhere along the way most recently 1990 in Italy quarter-final penalty shootout win and that man Dragan Stojkovic was guilty of missing his chance from 12 yards he'll be keen to put that one right Ikpeba can't thread it through Petrovic caught out though Ikpeba making amends Finidi with him but four dark shirted Yugoslavs there too now Jugovic Jukanovic substitute Komlenovic And once again, challenge of Sunday Elise proves enough for now. Stojkovic given room. Still Stojkovic spots his man. I don't think he's wasted a pass yet in the game. Now Jukanovic 
Nigeria getting back in numbers and forcing Yugoslavia back this is good midfield play from the Africans are they to be caught out no offside flag against Kamlenovic and good advantage played and allowing Lawal to come away now it's Oruma fine ball forward Ikpeba shooting chance perhaps clumsy tackle which Ikpeba rides and still going and the Monaco man can't quite get his foot around the ball but there's some appreciative applause from this Belgrade crowd although Yugoslavia's players don't appreciate something in Victor Ikpeba's run maybe just feeling that he muscled his way out of two or three of those challenges with a little too much force the small Nigerian contingent have something to smile about they haven't had a great deal in the game so far Victor Ikpeba there doing so well Africa's footballer of the year in 1997 away goes Dragan Stojkovic player of the match for me so far and a clear holding back of the arm and the shirt and anything that Godwin Ogpara could get hold of that Jugovic and another free kick that can't really be disputed and the kick away of the ball will earn an instant yellow card for Godwin Okpara plays in France with Strasbourg and becomes the second Nigerian to receive the yellow card in this game another French based player Nick Paber got the first one in the first five minutes Sinisa Mihailovic is lining up one of his long-range left foot specials you can see and hear by the crowd's reaction that there's only one thing they want to see here it's so far away from goal but Mihailovic has rattled plenty of goal nets from this sort of distance and more over the years and the Sampdoria man won't be phased his efforts have been timed at over 150 kilometers an hour he said that he'll probably let us down with this one he does it's scuffed and Abi Odenbarua it's a far more competent goalkeeper when it's coming to him along the floor he doesn't really instill confidence even when looking to kick out of his hands there he looks a nervous character the current Nigeria number one Stojkovic now Jokanovic and uh, those are the sort of things that squads and players are going to have to iron out no chance for those sort of mistakes at the World Cup finals they could prove so costly in whatever half of the field you happen to be in and now Brnovic gets the free kick Kanovic, that's a super ball Milosevic has done well now Seva Milosevic likes it on his left foot West as well Stojkovic likes it on either foot and held back and Adepoju won't escape the whistle but will escape the notebook but really Dragon Stojkovic should completely done the Nigerian midfielder and once again Mihailovic is lining up a special he's tried two shots on goal he hasn't made the best of either of them is it third time lucky it's a better one and the closest we've come to a goal so far that's more like the Mihailovic that Yugoslavia fans have seen over the last few years hit at pace and dipping dangerously and you can see just how close it was and not too sure whether Barua was quite getting down to it in time and that's livened things up for the last four and a half minutes or so of this first half Stojkovic again 
Yugoslavia buoyed by the Mihalovic strike. Petrovic. Stojkovic. Really is the epitome of the term playmaker and he's squaring angrily up to his marker there as he seemed to take a whack on the back of the ankle. Finidi gets on with the game. Olise. Obstruction given against Savalic. Oruma makes the most of it. There's the foul count. It's a clever turn there from Wilson Oruma. Nigerians don't have a Mihailovic in their ranks, but they do have several players capable of striking a good ball. And still, the row goes on. Predrag Miatovic at the centre of it this time. Branko Brnovic in there as well. Well, the warm-up game is getting hotter and hotter. And threatening to boil over. Referee calling in the assistance of two men on the side as well to help him out and still Wilson Aruma continues the argument in paper there too and the game's just got to calm down because although there have been plenty of free kicks there hasn't been any nasty challenges to talk about and yet perhaps that shows the uh, tension in the situation and so many players, well certainly a few on the Nigerian side, who aren't sure of their place in France. Pretty much all of the Yugoslav starting lineup, you can bet your bottom dollar, will be there. There are smiles on the bench between Miratinovic, the coach of Nigeria there, and Santrac, his Yugoslav colleague. That's good to see. Yes, the on-pitch tensions haven't been carried over to the dugouts. Now all that's ended. You might see some of the action we've come to see. Oruma and Sunday Olise. Wilson Oruma, first to move. And uh, not exactly a dummy. He's leaving it for Sunday Olise, who's taking a sprinter's run at this one. And Olise is going to try and copy me. Oh! Not far away. He was going for a Mihailovic special. Well, from our angle. It probably looked a little bit closer than it was. It did. It didn't bend at all and uh, would have been comfortable for Kryl, but there's confidence for you. And another foul. The tally mounts. And both teams are living up to their pre-match and pre-tournament descriptions of being adventurous. And here now is Komlenovic. That's a bit of ball, and there's the goal from Savo Milosevic. That's the way to answer the critics in the crowd. He's missed four relatively simple opportunities. That one, the toughest of the bunch, and put away with bravery and no little style. He started the move, it was a super pass. An even better cross from Komlenovic. And what about that for a diving header? Milosevic on target with the half-time whistle looming. And Yugoslavia take what you have to say on balance of play is a well-deserved lead. And our camera behind the goal shows just what a great finish that was. The pass wasn't bad. The cross was always going to cause problems. And Milosevic found the only gap that he could possibly have squeezed the ball through. He seemed to take a little bit of time to react to what he'd done. I mean, the crowd would say that he's taken time to react to anything all night, but uh, he's found the targets. And Yugoslavia lead by a goal to nil. Relief for Savo. And perhaps the whistles and cat calls will die a little right on 45 minutes then Milosevic's goal 
Away goes Jugovic. This time comfortable for Barua. And the referee deciding that with tempers just fraying a little, no need for any time to be added on. You would think a good couple of minutes would have been warranted for all the stoppages that we've had in the first half. But instead, it's half-time in Belgrade in this World Cup warm-up game. Yugoslavia with a goal right at the death, lead by a goal to nil. They've had the player of the match in Dragan Stojkovic. And so far, they have the only goal of the match from Savo Milosevic. Nigeria have played their part two in what's been a largely entertaining first half. Just at times showing a lack of composure in the final third of the field. They've had two good opportunities, but having tested Ivica Kral in the Yugoslav goal, Yugoslavia, good value for their leads. And with Stojkovic pulling the strings in midfield, surely more to come in the second half. Nigeria quite capable of scoring two. You feel there are more goals left in this game. Savo Milosevic for now is quite happy so we've got his name to the only one so far. Second half, of course, coming up live here on Eurosport. And at the break in Belgrade, Yugoslavia lead Nigeria by one goal to nil. And welcome back to the Red Star Stadium in Belgrade. Just 12 days before the start of the World Cup, just a few 100 miles from France and where Yugoslavia lead Nigeria by a goal to nil. Savo Milosevic just before a stroke of half time. A deserved lead for the Yugoslavs who've shown great technical ability throughout this game. Particularly in the midfield, the likes of Jugovic and Dragan Stojkovic. Add that to the free kicks of Sadisa Mihailovic and it all adds up to uh, what could well be a successful recipe for the World Cup finals themselves. They've looked the part in patches, the Yugoslavs, against the Nigerian team that's laboured somewhat. Bora Militinovic hasn't named a full strength side. Not involved in this one, or rather on the bench, the likes of Daniel Amakachi, Tijani Babangida, and Rashidi Yakini. Yugoslavia. In contrast, their coach, Slobodan Santrac, has gone for the big guns. And so far, they've delivered and really should be more than a goal to nil ahead. Mijatovic, Predrag Mijatovic, Real Madrid, European Cup winner. And Co. retake the field. Some of the Nigerians have been out there warming up for the start of the second half for a good two or three minutes now. The game in terms of the football that's been played has been an enjoyable one. A few too many free kicks conceded at times and... Uh, you can see that the Nigerians have decided to change their attire for the second half. They were in their white change strip, all white in the first half, they reverted Back to their traditional green shirts and shorts for this second half. I'm not quite sure why they've done that. Uh, certainly not a colour clash with Yugoslavia. Maybe they're looking for a change of strip to bring them a change of fortune. The atmosphere is still a little subdued during the half-time interval. Nigeria prepare to make a substitution at the start of this second half. It looks like Daniel Amakachi down on the touchline, waiting to make his way onto the field. The former Everton striker now with Besiktas in Turkey. He's going to be the first change. As Ivica Kral stands guard in goal. He's not bothered to change his green shirt, even though Nigeria are now in green. So Miatovic. 
stands alongside another substitution Darko Kovacevic ex of Sheffield Wednesday has come on at half time for Yugoslavia in fact quite a few changes to keep up with we'll uh, fill you in on all of them as the second half takes shape Dejan Stankovic has also come onto the field as the referee Mr Kotchev Anko Kotchev who hasn't exactly excelled himself in this game there's been plenty of whistle plenty of stop start if you'd let the players get on with it you feel that uh, it might have been a little better fair so uh, Kovacevic and Miatovic to start the second half for the Yugoslavs a goal to nil ahead and chip forward towards Kovacevic to give the Real Sociedad striker an early touch throw in Nigeria is the outcome Oparaku just heard the announcement that Daniel Amakachi has come on at half time for Nigeria Wilson Oruma still on the field and Finidi George who didn't see nearly as much of the ball as he would have liked in the second in the first half here is Finidi again they brought back so uh, Savo Milosevic the goal scorer is one of the players who's made way at half time Kovacevic replacing him and Dejan Stankovic been looking forward to seeing this 19 year old in action and New Nigeria almost catching Yugoslavia cold it was Victor Paved with a better chance than possibly anybody realized everybody in the stadium caught out by that as he just managed to float into a position to get his head to the ball first. Dubika Kral made the save look quite comfortable. Stojkovic step over. Almost brings in Jugovic. There's Taribo West. Nice touch to find Okpara. Now Amakachi using his pace. Oh, great burst from Amakachi. And Nigeria have started the second half in more sprightly fashion. Amakachi, who didn't have the happiest of spells at Everton, did ever so well at FC Bruges before moving to Merseyside, but uh, he's finding his touch again in Turkey with Besiktas and looking to have lost none of that pace. That was a great run. Very nearly caught Nisa Savalic out. Here again is Ogpara. Finidi. Jukovic's challenge. Try and establish in due course just why Nigeria have changed their strip for the second half. Here's Amakachi. And straight into Mihailovic. Finidi's throw. Catchy again, bright start. Olise. Okpara. Brought down. Advantage really should have been played. It's a yellow card that's been brandished against. Well, indeed, the free kick going Yugoslavia's way. It's Dragan Stojkovic, who's gone to ground. Now, it is a free kick, Nigeria as we thought it should have been for that tackle and it's Stojkovic who's come off worst he actually went down before the challenge of Kovacevic who receives the yellow card for his trouble it's the first yellow card dished out against a Yugoslavia player and Mr Kotchev of Bulgaria a very busy man in the middle. Several stoppages in the first half. None were quite as lengthy as this one. There's the card count. I suppose it's almost to the referee's credit that we haven't had that many. It is, after all, a warm-up game. I think uh, 
this sort of game the way tempers have risen at times would bring a spate of cards once we get to France in just over a week's time you can see Wilson Oruma there spotting the ball up very slowly and deliberately midfielder who's just won the French championship with Lance but not with free kicks like that Olise also a championship winner with Ajax of course all these players dotted around the world in the Nigerian side I'm a catchy still Daniel I'm a catchy won't be able to use his pace in that corner gets the throw when the decision is reversed thanks to Zelko Petrovic's anguish squeal and is that a smile on Slobodan Santrac's face or a look of amusement as Yugoslavia get on with the game. Well taken free kick despite the uh, attempt to block it from considerably less than 10 yards. Down in the centre goes Miatovic. No benefit awarded to his side though. Battling for the ball. Komlenovic. Haven't seen anything of the teenage wonder boy yet. Now here is uh, Petrovic. Stankovic has actually made a run into the centre but Petrovic caught. That's a bad challenge from Oparaku. And there's the third yellow card to a Nigerian player. Stojkovic, quick to embrace him. He was so late and that was so rash. And that sort of tackle in the World Cup might well bring punishment more than yellow. Look at this. It's a nasty one. And he realises instantly he was nowhere near the ball Petrovic felt the full force Mobi Operaku only plays second division football in Belgium with Capellen whatever level of football you play though you can't make that sort of tackle without getting punished for it Petrovic thankfully none the worse for wear. Stojkovic preparing to whip this one in. He might get a sight on goal here. This time the punch from the goalkeeper finds a green Nigerian shirt. Makachi giving chase again. Good work in a tight spot from Yugoslavia. Kovacevic can't keep it up. Stolkovic, furthest back in his own half, he's been all evening. And again. Such a shame that Dragon Stolkovic, with a display like that, is now 33 years of age and playing in Japan because it's hard to wonder why he didn't quite crack it with Marseille and and Verona in Italy should have been one of the really great players in Europe instead of just one of the very good ones Kovacevic caught offside another who failed to make the grade with the club in his case it was Sheffield Wednesday hasn't done badly since moving to Spain and scoring a few goals for Real Sociedad though Just wonder watching the game how these sides, World Cup group rivals, are reacting to what they're seeing. Yugoslavia with Germany, Iran, and the USA to face. The Germans will know they won't have it easy. Iran and the USA, no mugs these days either, though, but you have to say that Yugoslavia must be favourites to end up as runners up in the group, if not winners. That's Group F. Nigeria in group D standing for death as it's been termed there's always a group of death in the first phase Nigeria have got themselves in it with Spain Bulgaria and Paraguay and really if you say Spain are going to take the group as winners let's pick any 
one from three between Nigeria, Bulgaria and Paraguay. Nigeria, you feel, have a little way to improve. Many people saying that they should reach at least the quarter-finals, the Super Eagles. I'm quite sure if they'll do that on this showing. Caught out again. And Stojkovic. This time the tackle is a fair one and scampering away with the ball. Oparaku. Can't find a teammate with the pass though. And likewise, Yugoslavia too far ahead of Kovacevic. Teribo West. First half was lively for pretty much the whole 45 minutes. First 10 minutes of the second half. Struggling to live up to it. Petrovic struggles in turn against Oparaku. Now Finidi. Love to see him get into the game more. Great player when he really turns it on. Hasn't had the support or enough of the ball given to him to shine so far in Belgrade. Taribo West gives it away. Kovacevic, support from Stojkovic, now Miatovic, almost opened up for a shot from the Real Madrid man, and instead it's easy for Barua, and play goes on despite a suspicion that that ball may have crept over the byline, Finidi now. Not really a danger from this sort of position, indeed a danger to himself. Stojkovic, two in the middle. Stojkovic alone, he deserves a goal, but can't keep the shot down. Finidi caught out, and Dragon Stojkovic nearly taking full advantage. Great run. Great play to get into the shooting position. Not the best of shots. Still Yugoslavia 1, Nigeria 0. Lovely drop of the shoulder to tee himself up onto the right foot there. Didn't even test Barua. Kryl. There's his lines. A little uncertainty. And Jugovic. Again with the help of Savelic finds Kryl. And Savelic once more. Nisa Savelic, no stranger to France, plays with Bordeaux. It's been said that the Yugoslavs, with all the players dotted all around Europe and indeed the world as a whole, are a hodgepodge of a side. That's what counts against them. But when you consider that the vast majority of them either played for Partizan or Red Star Belgrade, they certainly know each other well enough to come together as a forceful unit in international games. Will they be tested at the back sometime in the remainder of this game? Kral decides not to come. Finidi's knocked down. Still not away, but then Amakachi guilty of holding on to Vladimir Jugovic. And Vika Kral, who's established himself as Yugoslavia's number one. Kral meaning king. And he's just about king of the goalkeepers at the moment in Yugoslavia pressure coming on him now from the former Kilmarnock goalkeeper Drago Lekovic who's the established number two incredible to think with only 12 days to go until the start of the World Cup finals though that so many countries haven't got themselves a recognized number one Country is still debating indeed whether to take two or three goalkeepers to France. Both these countries included. They'll delay their decision until next Tuesday, June the 2nd, deadline day for the final 22s to be named. Here's Taribo West, certain to be in Nigeria's, as is Uche Mukichaku.
last spell of possession for Nigeria. West looking to be the pace of Amakachi. And Yugoslavia can't quite get out of their own half now. Good ball. Amakachi again. Finidi stumbles. Finidi would have been the best option open to Oparaku, but uh, the slip meant he wasn't available. Referee now calling play back. Fact an earlier infringement has been noticed, and again the players decide to have, if not a heated exchange, then something bordering on lukewarm. It's Samakachi who's gone in the notebook this time for a late tackle. Four Nigerians in the book, one Yugoslav. And Samakachi exchanges views with Slavisa Jokanovic. No offside flag. Danger there for Ojigwe. It was the second Nigerian substitute at half time. Replaced Lawal. And problems for the goalkeeper. That must be 2 0. Oh, what a disaster for Nigeria. And what an easy goal for one of European football's master poachers, Predrag Miatovic. Won't score an easier one in the whole of the World Cup finals. West's back pass and Barua, who really has done himself no favours at all tonight, just didn't see Miatovic coming. Nigeria's goalkeeping problem deepens in Belgrade. Crew goalkeeper Adimola Bankola was called up for the recent friendly match with grasshoppers of Zurich Nigeria's 4-0 defeats left coach Bora Militinovic with little choice but to drop Bankola for a quite awful display Barua getting his chance to make himself number one you don't do that when strikers of the caliber of Miatovic are around although to be honest I think any Sunday league striker would have fancied his chances of finding the net from there so 2-0 Yugoslavia Nigeria's frailties have been exposed such a shame really that they should concede a goal as well because they were just showing signs of getting themselves back into the game forcing Yugoslavia back and now at 2-0 you would think that the home nation have got the game won and are capable of scoring a few more if there's to be a criticism levelled at the Yugoslavs it's that they haven't put more pressure like that on the Nigerian goalkeeper perhaps a chance for one back and ball appeals and uh, the referee has decided to issue another yellow card against well I thought at first it was going to be Amakachi is it Amakachi? the referee's uh, taken the card quickly out of his pocket nodded forward well no he's got it spot on it was clearly Mihailovic and Amakachi's claims have been listened to and still pushing and shoving free kick Nigeria and Mihailovic has got into the book and Bora Militinovic still finds plenty to smile about he's uh, been like that all game won't be smiling when it comes to sorting out goalkeepers though he does have uh, another goalie on the bench this evening if he wishes to use him it's the little known Willy Okpara waiting for his chance he must be thinking it's going to come to him very very shortly confirmation of Mihailovic's card lotted his otherwise clean copybook wall not quite 10 yards Nigerians joining in and some uh, over fussy refereeing at times has spoiled what otherwise has been quite an entertaining warm-up game chance then for Nigeria Taken short, chance for Finidi, couldn't get it through the crowd, and again, and this time the flag's up, and Yugoslavia trying to burst, the whistle has gone, it'll be called back, and that's why. Well, oh, Amakachi and uh, Miatovic at least exchanging pats, because uh, that's needed in this game, it's just again, 
almost reached boiling point. Yugoslavia 2, Nigeria 0. Savo Milosevic on a stroke of half time, redeeming himself with a super start to a move which he finished off himself in fine style, diving header into the corner after missing several opportunities early on. And then Predrag Miatovic with a simple task after dispossessing Nigeria's goalkeeper Abiodun Barua. Here's Kryl, his opposite number in the Yugoslav nets and the flick on is inadvertent it sets Yugoslavia up again and Barua somehow blocks out the attempted clearance Stojkovic Miadovic in the middle Kovacevic coming up as well that's 3-0 no Barua nowhere near the ball once more and Jugovic climbed and I thought for all the world he'd made it 3-0 Stojkovic couldn't have done any more And again the goalkeeper leaving himself so exposed and there are Spanish officials in the crowd at this game. The likes of Luis Enrique with his long range efforts and Raul Gonzalez in the Spanish national side must be rubbing their hands at the prospect of firing them in at Barua. Oparaku. Shirt being tugged of Oruma, keeps his balance. Nearly picked out Amakachi. Ball stabbed forward by Oparaku. Faber gives chase. Faber's had an exceptionally quiet second half. Almost the first chance he's had in an attacking position. Ojigwe. Certainly clipped. Jigwe down. The game needs a Nigeria goal. It's almost a little bit too easy for Yugoslavia at the moment. Good chance here. Not with delivery like that. Here's Amakachi. And Stojkovic back again. Savelic. Now Stojkovic. How on earth did he suddenly pop up there? Turned, span, and set off. Here's Miatovic. Shrugs off West. Goes back for a second go. Stojkovic, good feet. And this time Miatovic clattered into the challenge of Oparaku punished. Stojkovic and Co starting to turn on the style a little bit. Two more changes to be made by Nigeria. Rashidi Yakini is one of those who's going to come on. Although Milutinovic looks as though he's not quite made his mind up. Finidi George saw the number seven being held up and came towards the touchline. It is not he who is required to leave the field. like we're going to see Babangida of Ajax as one change replacing Wilson Oruma and the experienced striker Rashidi Yakini is also going to come on Any surprise I feel that uh, a change hasn't been made in goal perhaps taking uh, Barua now off would uh, not be the best thing for his confidence imagine how uh, Bancola feels having been sacked from the squad letting four in against grasshoppers recently Nigeria's coaches do have a ruthless streak but not today in Belgrade it would seem Miatovic he's certainly ruthless in this sort of area not this time. 
First chance for Yakini to chase the ball, but Yugoslavia will have the throw. Yakini, another part of the Swiss connection in the Nigerian side. Now 33 years old, playing with FC Zurich. Enjoying a second spell of international football. Philippe Troussier, the uh, man at the helm before that man, Milutinovic, totally ignored Yakini's claims. Milutinovic has recognised that uh, form is temporary, class is permanent, and Yakini was one of the outstanding performers for Nigeria at USA 94. Still has something to offer. Here's Jugovic. Just too far ahead of the run there. This time a comfortable one for Barua. His 10th international camp. Wouldn't it be his last? West. Wayward ball. Kovacevic now. So many green shirts back there. Nowhere for Kovacevic to go. Here's West again. Now Okpara. Almost played Okparako into trouble. And he has done. And Yugoslavia have got a great chance here. This must be 3 0. Surely. Kovacevic. Well, he took his time. But he knew exactly what he was doing. Darko Kovacevic blasting the ball past Abiodun Barua. It's Yugoslavia 3, Nigeria 0. And once again, Nigeria so exposed at the back. They've got real defensive problems with the World Cup just 12 days away. And Nigeria's first game is against the goal-happy Spaniards who beat Yugoslavia 2-0 in World Cup qualifying. That came to take place in Nantes. And uh, with Darko Kovacevic given that amount of time to put the ball in, I've already mentioned it, Raul and Co. in the Spanish sides must be rubbing their hands on the prospect of facing the Nigerians. 3-0, and that just about right, Nigeria need a goal urgently to boost their confidence if they have got one thing it's ability going forward we've not seen much of it in this game though and Yugoslavia really could swamp the Africans here Mijatovic already got one now Stojkovic who deserves one more than anyone still Stojkovic it's better defending this time no diving in from Mobio Paraku and again a little bit of hot blood on display. Stolkovic finding time to rub salt in the wounds. And the Yugoslavs finding time to make a change as well. It's going to be Zielko Petrovic who's had an outstanding game at left back to go off. He's going to be replaced by Lubinko Drulovic. The midfielder who's only just come back from club duty in Portugal with Porto. Trulovic, a late comer to join up with the Yugoslav squad at their training camp in northern Yugoslavia. Played his part. And a cup final win in Portugal with Porto. 3-1 over Sporting Braga at the weekend. And walking into a 3-0 lead for his country. Kryal reacts well as Savelic dithered somewhat. A 
applause for the performance of Petrovic as the substitution is announced on the public address system. Now we're here in Nigeria with Sunday Alise. Shrugs off the tackle of Yukanovic. And Okachi. Nigeria spraying it around but getting nowhere. This could be better. Yakini making a burst and easy again for Ivica Kral. Rather acrobatically and certainly enthusiastically cut out by Oparaku. Kovacevic flicks on. It has to be to himself though. Shrugged off by Oparaku and again there's uh, a little bit of reaction from Darko Kovacevic. No need really to pull the opponent down. Kovacevic failed to find the net in World Cup qualifying. Very much just a squad member. It's an interesting one to see who will partner Predrag Miatovic when Yugoslavia start their World Cup campaign proper. Milosevic and Kovacevic both on target in this one. Anton Drobniak still on the substitutes bench as well. A great season with racing lawns in France. Here's Kovacevic. Easy for Okachuku. And easy for Yugoslavia. Seen little in the second half of Dejan Stankovic, the teenager we've heard so much about, and who's going to Lazio in a reported £8 million deal. He was on at half time, he's hardly touched the ball, needs to get into the game more as Kryl again. It's like picking cherries at the moment for the Yugoslavian keeper, that one so easy. And the cross of Bavan Gida, and now a run from Stojkovic. Still dragging Stojkovic, he's got little support, he has now. Can't quite pick out though, Miatovic. Not had quite as impressive a second half as he did first there. And instruction being given to Ognjenovic, Perika Ognjenovic, the uh, latest Yugoslav sub preparing to make his appearance. Trulovic caught out. Clearance straight to Stojkovic. Clever play. Good turn as well. It's Kovacevic. Forced wide. Does well to centre. This time Taribo West as well. As Dejan Stankovic made the run. It was a good block. Helped out by his keeper. Yugoslavia. Well, they've had chances, they could be 5 or 6 nil up. Nigeria really have got to improve this final ball into the box. Everything too close, too close to Ivica Kral, a goalkeeper who lists Bruce Grobelar as his all-time hero. And a goalkeeper who's been linked with Real Madrid, still at home in Yugoslavia with Partizan Belgrade. That was the touch of Stojkovic. Kovacevic's determination. West getting back with a little help from Barua. So now we can have the change. Notice substitute to take the field is Perika Ognjenovic, another player who's going to go on his way to Real Madrid soon, replaces Stojkovic. And a magnificent reception for Ognjenovic from the Partizan Belgrade crowd, the Red Star crowd, should I say inside the Red Star Stadium.
Stojkovic has had a great game, takes a well-earned drink. Nigeria look for some consolation still and being forced back again. And away goes Drulovic. Ognjanovic behind. Now making the run. Three in the middle. Still Ognjanovic. Oh, saw the gap and nearly found it. Clever play. And Barua down quickly. The local hero, the Red Star striker. Almost stealing the headlines. Could be caught here. Yakini in the center and a catch is run. And again, it's hesitation that has let Nigeria down. Away again goes Ognjanovic. It's a great ball. Miatovic. Oh, super turn of foot. Great save. Best save yet from Barua. And Miatovic who's taken over the captain's armband. Almost getting his second of the game. That was a lovely body swerve to create the shooting chance. Ognjanovic in the centre. Drulovic instead goes back to Jugovic. Offside, no doubt about that one. What a cool finish though. What a cool finish from Miatovic. Shame about the flag. Yugoslavia 3, Nigeria 0. And it has been that comfortable. Well, Pele's prediction that an African team would win the World Cup by the end of the millennium has to come true this year, if it's going to happen at all. Nigeria tipped by most to be Africa's best hope. And on this showing, you wouldn't be putting your mortgage on them, claiming glory in France at the Stade de France on July the 12th. Wouldn't put anything on them actually passing the first round on this display. Taribo West. Olise. Amakachi. Better stuff. Yakini trying to get through. Trial reacts quickly and then caught out. It's poked away from him by Amakachi, who I think quite rightly says he went for the ball and got it. Kryl was feeling the effects of the challenge of Yakini. He did well to block but didn't have the ball in his hands. He only had one hand on the ball when Amakachi came in. You would surely put that down to Doing anything any striker would there, Daniel Amakachi. Only one hand on the ball, he won it. And again, Kral reacted. And Yugoslavia's reserve goalkeeper, Drago Lekovic, prepares to take the field. Well, the referee's given a free kick to Yugoslavia. Although it's uh, difficult to understand why that was awarded as a foul. state that the goalkeeper must be in full control of the ball and I don't think Ivica Kral was we've already talked about Nigeria's goalkeeping problems are Yugoslavia going to have one or two Lekovic will come on Militinovic, the Nigerian coach, still smiling on the touchline. Of course, it is his home country. Who are leading this match. But, uh, he would be looking for something rather better than his current charges have offered in this game. Militinovic, who's uh, certainly a wise old bird when it comes to management, and that's why he's on the brink of coaching his fourth different team at a fourth World Cup finals. Paid £23,000 a month by the Nigerian FA for the privilege. On top of a £66,000 signing on fee delivered to him in January. So, uh, not a bad job if you can get it. But Miljutinovic, who's been under fire from some quarters of the Nigerian media, 
He's doing just that, a bad job in many people's eyes just at the moment. Lakovic comes on with five and a half minutes of normal time remaining. Good running again from Kovacevic to force the throw. Still a strange sort of atmosphere in the Red Star Stadium. Uh, not a great deal of his enthusiasm has come from the stands. Occasional bursts from the band. That's been just about it. Chance to make it four. If Mihalovic had still been on the field, he would have fancied his chances to crack one goal from here. As Ivica Kral still receives treatment, and that will be a worry for Slobodan Santrac, the Yugoslav coach. The World Cup under a fortnight away. Mijatovic whips it in. Hacked clear anyway. Amakac has got the pace. He might well trouble Yugoslavia here. Lekovic, his first touch of the ball. He's a sure-footed clearance. And then Jugovic, equally sure. And this is a sweeping move. It could be four, it's Kovacevic. Must be. Oh, outside of the post. Mijatovic bursting away, Kovacevic was in the centre. He rode the challenge of the keeper well, but couldn't beat the post. It was a wonderful move, that's a great ball forward for Mijatovic to chase. Now on occasions, the Real Madrid man would have gone down there, such was his confidence at finding the target, he didn't. Couldn't stick the ball in between the two posts either. Still 3-0 then. Yugoslavia lead. Could so easily have been 6 or even 7. Nigeria might well have had themselves a couple of goals as well. We were promised attacking football from these sides in the World Cup. I think we're going to get it. Certainly in the Africans' case this evening, we're not going to see the best examples of defending though. Yakini. And Makachi now. Yakini's gone into the centre. Lack of concentration nearly breaks up the move. Well recovered. Ojigwe. Olise. Still Sunday. Olise. Beats Lekovic. And Amakachi coming in. Hopefully that won't be too serious for the Yugoslav number one on his way to FC Porto from Partizan Belgrade after the World Cup finals. And uh, he'll receive the necessary treatment, they'll get him patched up and no doubt ready to face Iran in St Etienne on the 14th of June. That's where it all starts for Yugoslavia. They've got uh, more warm-up games after this one. They face Japan. That's next Wednesday, the 3rd of June. And they wrap everything up with a trip to Switzerland on Saturday the 6th. Okapada, dispossessed, wins it back though. Now Amakachi. In his touch deserts him. Olise teased the shot up. It was always going to be an ambitious one. 
week of trial, just uh, putting pressure just below his eyes. Rapturous reception, though, for the 25-year-old. Well into the final minutes in the Red Star Stadium. Good couple of minutes or so, I would say, to be added on as Lekovic comes and claims. Ognjenovic. The roof would be raised if the Red Star local hero were to score. Too far ahead of Babangida. Question of how much stoppage time the referee is going to add on. Only 30 seconds or so in the first half. We've had a few more stops and starts in this second period, but uh, won't be that keen to prolong it any longer than he might do because it's only a warm up game after all. As the ball's played all the way back to Lekovic. Perhaps chance for a fourth for Yugoslavia. Not with that run from Miatovic, though. It's brought back for offside. Olise. Babangida. Police by Ognjenovic, who's done plenty of enthusiastic running since taking the field. Ogpara. Offside again. This time it's... Daniel Amakachi and the referee decides that that will do for this World Cup warm-up game which Yugoslavia have pretty much bossed from the first whistle and a 3-0 scoreline in their favour doesn't flatter them at all well worthy of that win Dragan Stojkovic takes the acclaim of the crowd after a man of the match display particularly in the first 45 minutes he didn't get on the score sheet Savo Milosevic, Predrag Mijatovic and Darko Kovacevic did. The reason why Yugoslavia have triumphed by three goals to nil over Nigeria. Their confident run towards the World Cup Finals continue. Nigeria have plenty to think about. So the question for coach Borat Milutinovic is where do Nigeria go from here? Next week they have a very daunting warm-up game indeed in Holland against the Dutch. If they can improve and lose that game by less than this three-goal margin, and that will have to be considered a major achievement. But this was the first goal of Yugoslavia's three tonight. The best of the lot. Milosevic starts the move and from Kumlenovic's cross he was there to bury the ball past Barua. Don't forget we've got plenty of football still to come on Eurosport this weekend as the UEFA Under-21 Championships continue. Germany against Sweden on Saturday then on Sunday Spain meet Greece in the final to determine just who are the 1998 European Under-21 Champions. Still we look back at that first goal for Yugoslavia just barely a minute before half time. If we see goals like that at France 98, we'll be in for a treat. Don't forget, all 64 games can be seen. The most comprehensive coverage possible on Eurosport. Every game to be shown in its entirety. There'll be a feast of football from the moment you wake up, from the moment you go to bed. There'll be great goals. There'll be goals like this as well. Goals that Abi Odun Barua, the Nigerian goalkeeper, will want to forget rather too quickly. And he'll hope that it hasn't jeopardised his place in the sun in France this summer. That was one of the easiest goals that 
European Cup winner Predrag Mijatovic will ever score. 2-0 to the Yugoslavs and 2 became 3. Just over 10 minutes later, Darko Kovacevic, all his own work and he had plenty of time to find the net, which he did. Yugoslavia 3, Nigeria 0. Yugoslavia preparing to face Iran, Germany and the USA and France. Nigeria have to somehow get themselves back together to face Spain, Bulgaria and Paraguay in the so-called group of death. It's been an entertaining evening in Belgrade. A very good evening from Guy Mowbray, having seen Yugoslavia beat Nigeria by three goals to nil. The Football World Cup with Opal Gillette Pasbana and Samsung Electronics.